r slash ask reddit which socially acceptable behavior makes you cringe asking people why they're still single or when they are going to have babies because everyone else your age is kids people talk about having kids as if providing for one is the easiest thing in the world person at work to single me you should have kids me i'll pick some up on the way home shall i Speaking ill of your significant other constantly, if they're so awful, why are you with them? I wouldn't be with someone I had cause to speak poorly of, and I certainly wouldn't want my so to be beaching about me every day. As a 31 year old single person, it drives me ducking insane when people my age tell me dude, you're so lucky you're single, stay single as long as you can. Like, no, still being single in your 30s kind of sucks sometimes, believe it or not. It's your own fault you are miserable in your relationship. As a 38 year old single guy, I couldn't agree more. Not telling someone when there is something wrong with their looks that they can fix in a few seconds he will tell people if they have food in their teeth, or if they have hair standing up, or whatever it is, as long as it is not on per person can be fixed in seconds and or a quick trip to the nearest mirror. If thanks for the gold kind stranger. I get pissed when I find out there was something wrong and no one told me. WTF is kind about letting me walk around looking stupid. Likewise, if I said something that upset you I'd rather you tell me than harbor a grudge. I think people confuse or mask their anxiety or discomfort with empathy. I always tell people, I thought that was nice instead of rude. I'm not very cultured. Forcing food on people. If I tell you I don't want food or I'm full, please believe me. It's awful trying to go on a diet when your co-workers keep trying to force you to eat the office cupcakes. If you tell them you're on a diet, they feel compelled to reassure you about your weight. If you try to politely decline food, they keep asking you are you sure? Just one cupcake won't hurt. There's no winning. I just tell them sorry, I don't eat anymore and they get really confused. That's a good way to give your Italian grandmother a heart attack. Forcing kids to hug kiss people when they don't want to. Sill, give auntie a kiss kid hides face me. Or it's okay she's not in the mood. Comma. TBH I'd prefer not to be kissed because I'm not a touchy person so I'm cool with it. Sill, give auntie a kiss right now or you'll hurt her feelings. Don't you love auntie? Kid getting even more shy and embarrassed annoyed me. Honestly it's fine. Really. Sill, give auntie a kiss or you don't get a snack later. FFS just let the kid decide if she wants to kiss someone or not. Don't force her. I don't even care. Stop trying to guilt trip her on my behalf. Edit. To clarify, I am auntie and Sill, sister-in-law, is the kid's mother. Sill, give auntie a kiss or you don't get a snack later. Someone said something similar to my kid once. I reminded her that my child isn't a prostitute. That shut her up. Haha. <laughs> I always hated kisses. As a kid, I would be willing to give hugs all day. But I don't want your ducking mouth on me. You. Honestly. Duck people who try to force their will on others. Being a kid was a ducking nightmare. Because you can't stop people from putting you in shitty, uncomfortable situations and no one respects you. People treat kids like they're animals. They're just small people that lack experience at doing people things. Being obnoxious because it's seen as being outgoing quirky fun. It's none of those things. You don't have a personality. You're just loud. Edit. To the people saying I'm like this but I wish I wasn't. No. You're not. These people have no idea how annoying they are and they're doing it on purpose. If you find yourself being loud without realizing till it's too late. Keep doing you. We've all been there. Yes. Thank you. Especially when you're loudly just ripping off shit you've seen on the internet or things people have said to you. Dabs and obnoxious. Rubbing a pregnant woman's belly. Not pregnant. Maybe in the future. If that ever happens to me. I plan to rub their belly in return. Whoever it is. My sister did that when she was pregnant and it's hilarious. Now when people ask if they can touch the baby she says okay. But I get to touch you first. People have no concept of personal space. We have one child. She is 6. People constantly ask me if I'm having another. I say sure and leave it at that. Then it becomes why haven't you had one yet? Is it you? Does your husband not want any? 
I'm polite still and say it just hasn't happened yet, but thanks then it's followed with why though, she's big already, you don't want a large gap, have you been trying, seriously, I hate that I'm too polite to say the truth, that I've had 6 miscarriages already so just leave me alone about it, edited to add, most assume it was a female who asked this, no, a male coworker. thanks for all the positive replies. Give those idiots a slap of reality, there's a time and place for being polite. This is exactly why I don't ask anyone about their reproductive plans unless they bring it up first. Taking pictures of everything you do and posting them online. God, my youngest cousin is the worst for this. We spread my grandma's ashes on Sunday and he was filming the whole thing. As if anyone's gonna want to watch that edit, so a little context. My grandma died well over 10 years ago but due to family issues we've only just spread her ashes. The affair wasn't morbid or sad. It was nice that we could say a final goodbye when the loss wasn't raw. Also my cousin never knew her and he's only 6 stroke 7. He's just a kid and I guess he's learning about death and found it interesting. I don't disagree with people saying it's disrespectful. But he's just a kid. You have to make allowances sometimes when they are learning about real life. Yikes. Playing your music at full blast from a speaker when you're in public. Yep, a lot of people find it annoying but the fact that so many people can do it and not be embarrassed means it's becoming socially acceptable. I am so sick of people letting their kids watch YouTube videos on full volume in public. I'll give your kids some ducking headphones. These people are actually the worst because they are teaching their children it's okay. Old married couples being awful to each other. Especially when they try to involve me in it too. No thank you. I don't want anything to do with your misery and dysfunction. I see you've met my parents. Also any married people in general a lot of them today seem to be on a fad where they just hate on each other and talk about how horrible their spouse is. I guess it's supposed to be a joke but it never feels like it. People that can't hold normal discussions and instead start to scream or get very angry because your opinion isn't true according to them. This is my father-in-law. Only his opinion is valid in his mind. Asking people about their marriage procreation plans at social events. Like WTF. That's deeply personal. And you never even know if people aren't trying but having trouble conceiving. Anyways how's your sex life? Oh. Hi Mark. Spitting. The pool I work at gets a lot of people from China who are constantly spitting on the side of the pool and in the water. That's not socially acceptable. In China it is. I don't know if anybody has said this yet, but shit talking service workers. Sure, working at Denny's or McDonald's isn't the most glamorous or stable job, but it's still a job. If you're going to shit on these people, you don't deserve your drunken stack of flapjacks at 3 in the morning. The same goes for gas station attendants, janitors, cabbies, cashiers, waiters, and any other job that can land you under minimum wage. If you don't respect the person performing a service, you shouldn't get the service, period. Totally agree. In high school I worked at McDonald's, and I couldn't believe how horrible some people treat you for working in fast food. Especially a grown adult treating a high school kid that way. Now that I'm an adult with a child of my own, I teach him to always respect people at those places. Especially if you don't want your food spit into lol. I literally had a woman scream at me, telling me how she was college educated, and how she wasn't going to be talked down to by a fast food employee with a pimple face and a knot in his hair. My hair was just long enough to require tying back. It didn't look good. I was trying to explain to her that what she ordered isn't a thing. She can't read a menu. But I'm the a-hole. Why do people lick their fingers to separate my papers at the printer? Maybe I don't want your saliva on my report, Karen. I work at a bank and people lick money to count it. With Canadian money this actually makes it harder to count. I put licked money in a counting machine and a couple people are starting to be like why aren't you counting it yourself but it's because you duckine licked it you moron. Sorry but Canadian bills have no germs on them. The Canadian mint politely asked the germs not to live on the currency and they were happy to oblige. The culture in retail where someone can complain about some small slight or small defect that doesn't affect anything in the slightest and corporate will bend over backwards rewarding the customer and punishing the employee for following the rules. 
they set in the first place. But not only does this behavior breed resentment among your employees, but it also trains your customers to behave horribly in order to get free stuff. I don't usually make posts on Facebook but, and proceeds to go into a 5 paragraph political essay. Ha, huh, that reminds me of the people that like to flaunt their morality by saying, I don't support the death penalty, but in the case of blank, I'll make an exception. Well, guess what Aunt Debbie, if you support the death penalty for, blank, then you support the ducking death penalty, and I ain't even mad about that, but like, own it. That was always my response when someone said I'm pro-life for myself, but if someone else wants to get an abortion, then I have no problem. That means you're pro-choice, you weirdo. I'm not sure if this is socially acceptable, but it happens way too much. If you are waiting for a subway, tram, train, bus, whatever and it arrives at the station, to let the people WHO need to get off off before you get on. Don't stand right in front of the doors and block them. I take the subway very often, and I encounter this way too much. Just stand to the side. It's not hard. Edit. I think I can say RIP in box now. When I am leaving a bus and people try to get in and I'm one of the first leaving, I intentionally make myself wide and push back anyone trying to get in. I get some weird looks sometimes, but it's so worth. Things just flow so much better controversial but gay flirting culture. I live in a pretty gay friendly area, but it is really common to see people get backed into corners, groped, ass slapping, etc. It's completely obnoxious and in many cases qualifies as sexual assault. Shame on you. I wouldn't call it flirting. I'd say it's straight up gay sexual harassment culture. Guys get too handsy in the bars. Usually I'll excuse the first attempt but there's always a couple guys who just won't back off. There have been a couple of times I have had to remind gay men that while they are gay, they are also dudes and that getting too far out of line has consequences. Buddy of my was very surprised when the straight dude he had been ass grabbing knocked him upside his head. Like his repeated, unwanted physical advances wouldn't have any backlash because he is gay. I don't know if this is a regional thing, but around here it's very common to just stop responding to someone if you no longer want to talk to them. You end up nervously talking more because it's such an abrupt end, but they keep on ignoring you. This is very frustrating for obvious reasons, but everyone does it. Hey dude, you see that show last night yeah? That shit was crazy. The bassist pulled off some crazy stunt. Dut. Yeah, we don't get a lot of shows like that anymore. Pulls out phone, confusion and social anxiety intensifies. Jeff, you ducking a hole. How tf are you going to bail out a conversation you started with me? Wait, in person? I know people do that when texting, but an actual conversation where one person stops abruptly is just weird. Real world ghosting sounds like the rudest thing a person could possibly do. Concert goers recording said concert on their phone. Just enjoy the ducking music. Back in my day, you had to smuggle in a camcorder. Then when security stopped you, you had to pretend there was no tape inside. When they left, you'd just continue filming. You had to pretend there was no tape inside how would this even work? Oh, yeah no tape. I just thought I'd carry around this camcorder around for no reason whatsoever. Nothing suspicious here. Telling people they're too thin the word usually used is skinny and the tone is usually disgust. Oh my god you're so skinny. I once overheard two female co-workers having a loud, purposefully loud, conversation about my weight. One of them remarked he's handsome but he's way too skinny now. I don't know if it's the same for women, but as a man I've taken some real shit for my weight. It seems like it might be an American thing as well. Because 6 feet 1 inches and 175 pounds is perfectly healthy by all medical standards. But that's when I got the most comments about it. I'd lost 20 or so pounds of pure fat but instead of feeling more confident I ended up more self conscious. That's pretty ducked. The only person who's allowed to tell me I'm too skinny is my mother. As she passes me another slice of pie. I once dated a girl who died of an unknown reason. Aneurysm? Mild heart attack? We didn't yet know. Within a couple weeks I was at work, 
and across a quiet, crowded room of mostly strangers. A mutual work friend asks hey did they find out what happened with my girlfriend who just died tragically at a relatively young age. Keep in mind we're talking about an adult in their 30s who should know better. Just because the question sounds innocent doesn't mean that it's okay to ask one of the people closest to the deceased who's still in the morning in front of a bunch of strangers at work. I swear to god, if you're not legally related to the deceased, people think they can just talk to you about them like they're a fact instead of someone hugely important to you. Some people just have no clue about grieving. They mean nothing by it, but it's still a tough thing to deal with in the throes of grief. Turning non-political conversations into political ones. Shit gets on my nerves so much. I like turning political conversations into non-political conversations. Is it possible to learn this power? Talking about yourself too much without being prompted. Let me tell you about this time I. Women making sexual remarks about men. Physical and or verbal. Right to their faces. I wouldn't want anyone doing that to me. So why the hell would I do that to anyone? The harpies on The View are notorious for this. Note, I'm female. What's weird about this is as a guy if I see a woman and I want to compliment them on something. Like wow you have nice eyes etc. I ultimately don't cause I don't want to sound creepy. So as a man, I'm going to throw this out there as a general guideline. Don't touch my face. Don't run your fingers through my beard. Unless you have asked first and I know you. Don't do it. I feel like that's not a hard concept. Asking people when they are having children. Or assuming they are if they don't. What if I don't want kids? What if they have been having trouble getting pregnant? No one thinks about this stuff and then decides to immediately start dispensing advice. It gets old fast. Then proceeding to inform you that you don't know what true love is until you've had a child or you're not complete. GRRR. Or saying, oh, you'll change your mind someday. With an all-knowing smile. Maybe. Or maybe I won't. Flooding your inbox with unwanted nudes. I mean, girls, that's not how you get guys to like you. Trying some reverse psychology. I see. Tons of people showing up to the hospital when a couple have just given birth. Stripping the parents of relaxing bonding time between them and their baby just so they can all pass around and hold the baby and expose it to every germ they have. It rubs me raw. Just tell them to leave. It's that easy. And if they won't, the hospital staff will damn sure force them to. When we had our son, once my wife was given her epidural and before the baby was born, Hospital policy only allowed two other non-staff people in the room at any given time, and it was strictly enforced. Given that I was the father and husband, I had permanent rights as one of the two. By my wife's royal decree, the other person who was in there most of the time was my wife's favorite aunt. Even my wife's mother tried to come in a few times when my wife didn't want her there due to feeling nauseous from the drugs. Just not wanting to be around her. My mother-in-law is super anxious all the time and a bit overbearing at times. Or whatever other reason. And she was promptly escorted out. I admit I felt a little tinge of schadenfreude. Even though I do genuinely like my mother-in-law. The hospital staff didn't duck around with that policy. And they were at the same time very good about enforcing it tactfully. I intend to wait until a few days after my best mate is back home with the baby then arrange a visit and bring some food with me cause I reckon they'll probs appreciate not having to cook for a night. Forced small talk. I'm not talking about oh hey we're at a party or a work meet and we actually should be communicating and networking to try to find common group to make our daily lives a little easier. I mean hey I'm a stranger you will never see again in your life. We are having much weather. Yes much weather. Did you see the sports ball last night? I can't believe team won that game. The ref was out of line. Spending all of your time on your phone. Especially if you have kids. Hashtags. Edit. Turns out the octothorpe is a header type formatting command on reddit. I like the yelling but wanted to properly hashtag my hashtags. Clapping when the plane lands successful. It's definitely cringier when you clap after an unsuccessful landing. People who apparently think that it is okay to have a conversation on speakerphone while out in public regardless of where. People who announce that they're about to leave social media before they do. It makes sense if social media is the main way you'd contact them before. 
though. I'd rather they do than to find out I tried contacting them in vain for months. People not controlling their loud children. Your kid is climbing on tables and screaming. Disrupting everyone else's meal. And you're not even going to attempt to handle it? Oh. This child is the same age as you. You guys have to become friends and play together. Why? It's so that the moms can drink wine together. This seems to be mostly a baby boomer generation thing but arguing with people at stores and restaurants etc when the workers do not bow down. Bend the will of the universe and change the rotation of the earth for you. Here's a hint duckers. It's called the heliocentric model because the earth revolves around the sun not you. Talking on the phone while interacting with someone at a cash register slash or help desk. The person helping them can't exactly ask them to get off the phone. It's just so disrespectful. Oh my god how yowoo so good to see yowoo. Fake hug. Dog filters on photos. Cop the duck on. People. Gay or straight. Who led with their sexuality. There's a reason for it with gay people. Pretty much every gay person has lost friends and family after coming out. So it's much easier when meeting new people to let them know you're gay fairly early on in order to weed out who will hate you based on such a trivial thing before strong friendships form. Right? I don't dislike gay people. I dislike when gay is someone's whole one dimensional identity. Dads. The dance move. Something about it. I dislike it intensely. A lot of the photos people take, especially most selfies, every time I see some girl with a stone dead bored look on her face pull out her phone and instantly put on a massive smile and coke her head to some weird angle I get uncomfortable. Even worse if she has to attempt it multiple times. The worst is when I personally am in someone's photo and told to smile, and the pic is not taken immediately. I can smile and look pleasant quickly for a nice picture, of course. But there is something just so repulsive and soul crushing to me about having to stand frozen in the same position, with the same frozen facial expression, for a minute or two while someone ducks around with their camera does multiple radars. As a result of this and many pictures of me I will have some weird face on because after a certain brief window I just have to start changing it and making it silly or else I'll die. People who can stand there with the same fake smile for a really long time are inhuman to me. Edit. I think a lot of people are reading this as me hating on the social media lifestyle in general. I'm not. Do your thing. It's the actual physical process of trying to pose or hold an expression for a picture for an extended moment that I can't handle lol. Reminder. Cringing means being made uncomfortable and empathetically embarrassed. Not disliking something or thinking it's dumb. Gender reveal parties for expectant parents. I saw one the other day where even the parents didn't know. A friend of theirs did. Who was in charge of the surprise? In an office. Scented candles. Oil burners. Diffusers. Or any other device designed to pump a scent into the air. I hate them so much. They smell like cleaning supplies and they're so strong that I can actually taste them. Which pisses me off when I'm eating lunch and my sandwich turns Lysol flavored. They are all factory terrorism. People applauding sarcastically when a waiter slash waitress breaks something. People making an effort to be different for the sake of being different. Dressing strangely and liking things simply because of how obscure they are. Acting pretentious about it. Being condescending towards people who don't share the same obscure tastes as you. In short, hipsters. Making out with your so on public transit in restaurant stores. Edit. Typo. Adults having temper tantrums to get their way. Posting political memes. This goes for both sides. I'll look at them, laugh, and move on. But when people post them as if they're truth, I just shake my head. Judging people based on having sex or who they have sex with. Overheard someone making fun of his friend for sleeping with a heavier woman. Who the duck cares? They're adults. Everyone can relax. The monkey king has arrived. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.